everybody. I'm very happy to be here. Um, today I'm going to present a joint project <coughs> with uh, Cheris, who is here, and Anya, and, and Eilid uh, Gnizzi. And I'm going to talk about consumer electric pricing. So just for you, for those who don't know what consumer electric pricing is, consumer electric pricing is any economic transaction in which consumers can choose how much to pay for a product or a service. And this pricing strategy has been, uh, has been widely used by non-profits and for, as well as for profits. Um, let me give you an example. So back in 2007, the, radio, uh, the music band Radio N, Radiohead decided to sell their album in Rainbow, um, allowing consumers to choose how much to pay. What do you think? Did it work? Well, it did. So um, there were uh, quite a lot of downloads. 40% uh, of the people did pay something, and the band made more money with this sale than with the sale of the previous album, which was done under a standard pricing technique. So then researchers started to look into why in situations in which consumers can choose just to pay nothing, why do they pay? And they have identified a couple of factors that might play a role. So social preferences might affect the decision to pay in those contexts. So people might just pay because, they, um, because of altruism or reciprocity. Self-signaling seems to play a role because people might just um, choose to pay in order to feel good about themselves. And other couple, another couple of factors are social pressure, um, expectation about the behavior of <coughs> others, and people valuation of the product. However, does this strategy always work? Let me give you another example. So this is the website of a Spanish travel booking agency, which um, back in 2009 decided to sell holiday packages allowing consumers to choose how much to pay. Did it work? What do you think? Not really. <laughs> so people did pay something, but the, the travel agency was only able to capture 5.3% of the total value of it. It was a disaster. So um, those are just examples. Um, what I want to leave you with is that consumer elective pricing works, but only sometimes. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So why? What's going on? In this paper, we propose that Another factor that might play a role in the decision on, what, on how much to pay is the mindset in which people are at the time of the, of the transaction. So consumer elective pricing is a very interesting domain because whenever people, ch consumer get a product and choose how much to pay in return, um, they might just focus on the product they get and therefore this might just start bringing in self-interested consideration and try to maximize and um, pay as little as possible or consumer might focus on what they can give. They might just focus on the seller and um, all the other forces I discussed before might just kick in and this might result in more generous behavior. So what we propose is that different elements in the decision context might affect whether the first thoughts, like the mindset in which people are, which by mindset literally we mean the state of mind in which what people think about at the, very, at the time of the transaction, is more like self-interested or less self -interested. What do we know about mindset in the literature? Um, we know from the literature that um, in situations in, in which cost-benefit considerations are um, involved, as opposed to pro-social considerations, um, the behavior changes. This affects behavior. For example, whenever uh, social incentives are in place, we know that introducing market incentives might just like change the behavior of people, crowding out the intrinsic motivation to be nice or pro-social. The literal money market and social market norms um, also suggest that whenever, in, in, in whenever market, market norms, marketplace norms are evolved, people just um, are in a very transactional mindset and just make cost-benefit considerations while social market norms just behave in different ways in order to be nice. And the social psychology uh, literature also has a similar distinction between communal versus exchange relationship. And when people are in communal relationship, they just behave, they have a sense of res responsibility um, against the, towards the other party, while in exchange relationship people just exchange benefit. And this is in line with this idea of mindset. And what about consumer elective pricing? Um, in consumer elective pricing, we know that in many situations when, um, so there is recent research showing that whenever a charity is linked to a purchase, uh, people pay more. 
this increases payment. So whenever um, people can pay as much as they want and some of the proceeds are donated to charity, people um, start increase payments. And this is in line with this idea that they might just take, um, they might just shift their mindset away from self-interest. So in this paper, I'm gonna uh, test the idea of mindset shift in two different <coughs> contexts. And we're not gonna, uh, we're, we will keep con con constant the, the person who benefits from, from the payment. And we're gonna test it in two different domains. First of all, we are gonna look at a charitable, um, purchase, uh, charitable domain, and in a second set of studies, we will look at purchase domain. Our manipulation of mindset will be the wording, so <coughs> the wording used to communicate a consumer elective pricing offer. So we will just change the words and see whether different words trigger different mindset. Let me show you the first study. So the first study was in the domain of charitable fundraising. We ran a field experiment at University of Wisconsin in Madison and sold donuts from a local bakery, uh, Greenbush Donuts, it's a popular bakery, um, on campus. So we had some stands and just sold donuts. And all the proceeds were donated to charity. The charity that we picked was uh, Special Olympics, which is a charity for people um, with um, disabilities. And what's our manipulation of mindset? So to evoke different mindset, we either frame the, um, the offer as a purchase or as a donation. So in the purchase case, uh, people saw this sign that said, pay what you want for a Greenbush donut, and all the proceeds are going to be donated to charity, to a special place. In the donation case, um, the sign said, donate what you want and get, get a Greenbush donut, and all the proceeds go to special place. So what we think is that in the purchase case, the word pay might just evoke all those market norms and might make people more focused on what they get rather than the, on the charity and what they can give. Um, just, and while in the donation case, um, people might, might just shift away from self-interest in the consideration. Okay? So a couple of more details about the study. The study was run um, over two days in two different locations. We randomized the, the treatment and counterbalanced them across the location. And uh, consumer, <coughs> or the donors who approached uh, the, the stand <coughs> didn't know that they were part of an experiment. So what do we find? So this is the payment for the people in the uh, pay treatment. Um, we see that they paid. They did pay quite a bit. They paid one, uh, an average $1.50 uh, $1 per donut. But when this offer was framed as a donation, we did donate a pill. We see that people pay more. So people just pay more. A couple of interesting thing, things about this result are that, okay, over here I'm only including the people who approached the stand and actually took a donor. However, we had people who also approached the stand and gave, just to give a donation. They didn't want anything in return. And those people are many, many more proportionally much more like in the donate treatment. Also, we see that um, using the word donate doesn't prevent people to approach the stand. Significantly more people approach the stand when the offer was framed as a donation. So this is um, the net donation per transaction, including also all the people who made just a pure donation without getting anything in return. So what is um, net of cost. So the donuts cost um, 92 cents to us, so we see that the, um, the, the, donation, the net donation was much higher in the donate treatment. So the summary, people paid more uh, when the offer was framed as a donation. And this is in line with this idea that using the word pay might have just activated this transactional mindset um, in which people would just want to pay a bit less, while using the word donate might just shift people away from this transactional mindset and just people to be more generous. Okay, so next, what we want to do is try to test whether we can shift mindset in a traditional purchase domain. So the purchase domain, um, we, don't, um, we don't have a charitable component, so we will use, so whenever like 100, not 100% of the process are donated to charity, we can call it a donation, and so we will use a different manipulation of mindset, changing, a couple, uh, changing one of the words in the offer we will compare a pay what you want offer to an offer that is um, called pay what you can. So if you think about the, just the words, 
Um, want is a very self-oriented word. When people are asked to pay what they want, this like might just signal to the customer, okay, the, um, the seller is okay with whatever price I choose. However, when the offer is um, pay what you can, instead, can is about <coughs> ability, about being able to, and might just shift people away from self-interest consideration. And asking people to pay what they can might just also signal to them that the seller needs some money. So we pre-tested this, um, how people react with the, um, to those two uh, offers in an hypothetical test um, experiment and uh, survey, and then uh, and find support for the fact that in pay what you want, people um, just evoke more uh, market norms. So then we moved on and tested it in the field, and ran a field experiment at UC San Diego, in which we saw the donuts this time from from Krispy Kreme um, on the university campus and we varied the uh, frame of the offer. So in one case, the, the sign that said, take a Krispy Kreme donut and pay what you want. In the other case, it said, take a Krispy Kreme donut and pay what you can. <coughs> and we measured the amount paid. So what we see, and here people didn't know where the money was going, so we didn't make it obvious. It was just a stand on campus. Here is what we find. Again, using the word can, increase payment. So here, the average payments are much lower than in the first in the experiment in Madison because here there was no charitable component. It was just about the words. Um, but still, using the, the word can increase payments. Then we, um, we wanted to replicate these results. Um, here, we didn't measure purchase rates, so how many people approached the stand. And so we just wanted to test, to check whether the, uh, using the word can might just diminish purchase rate or, or not. So we replicated the study and measured purchase rate. And those are the results. So we um, basically it's roughly the same. <coughs> People pay more using pay what you can. And we don't find, um, we find equal purchase rate. So we don't find that using the word can prevented people from approaching the stand. So as a summary of the second study, we see that paying, uh, asking people to pay what they can just leads them to pay more and we don't find different purchase rates. However, we have a couple of potential concerns with this study. First of all, it wasn't a real transaction. People, we don't know what people thought about, where the money was going. Um, they might just have thought that some people might have to believe that the money was going to charity, some people might not. And so in the next study, we will partner with a, um, with a real uh, for business and test the, the result again. Second, the payment in all these studies that I showed today was done in public. And if you think, mostly for the pay what you can, if you think about the word, um, if you are asked to pay what you can, if the payment is public, you might just be afraid to signal that you are cheap. And, um, but maybe in private, this wouldn't be the case. However, if it's really <coughs> about the mindset that the word can trigger, um, it might, if we should see this, this effect also in private. Okay, so in the next study, we try to address those concerns. We, we, we partnered with a um, coffee shop at the University of San Diego. Um, the coffee shop has different locations on campus and sold coffee, allowing uh, people to choose how much to pay. So it was a two by two design in which we crossed the payment scheme, pay what you want versus pay what you can, with payment anonymity. So in one case, people approached the stand and they were told that they could pay as much as they wanted or can. And, um, they could, um, uh, they paid the seller. So they, the payment was public and people paid the seller. In the other case, the payment was in private, which meant people were allowed to choose, the, they were given an envelope, they were told to put as much money as they wanted in the envelope and drop it in a, in a box. And even for people who paid with credit card, we gave them, they were allowed to swipe their credit card, end of the amount, the receipt came out and they put it in the envelope, dropped it in the box and it was private. Um, one thing here is that um, we it would have been ideal to have only one size of coffee, but we had all different sizes. So like people could choose, could choose the size to get. So if there's small, medium, or large coffee. Um, let me show you the results, just the raw data with all the um, sizes together. So of course they might pay more for large, they might be less for small. So those are the raw data for um, all the um, different uh, sizes. The first two bars, uh, show the uh, can conditions, both in private and public. 
and the second and third bar, uh, the third and fourth bar, they want permissions, both in private and public. Here it doesn't seem like, I mean, it seems that people pay more, we pay what you can, but there is no effect whatsoever of the prim private versus public manipulation. We confirm this result, of course, we have the concern that there are different sizes, so we explore this result using regression analysis and then uh, controlling for the uh, different sizes. So we see that people paid more for medium coffees and even, even more for large coffees. But even when controlling for size, the effect of the pay what you can offer uh, still shows up. So both in private and in public, people on average paid 27 cents more um, when the offer was um, framed as a pay what you can than when it was framed as pay what you want. And then when we add control variables, the effect <coughs> seems to be robust. So, in conclusion, what I was um, talking about today, so consumer elective pricing is a very appealing technique that could be used by both for profit and non profit but it's, it's, it's very, we need to be careful because different motives are in place. So whenever, pe people, whenever people get something in return, they, just, they might just focus on what they get rather than how much they could give. And there is a lot of room for manipulating this. So whenever those promotions, uh, those offers are set up, it's really important to think about what might trigger, what might trigger self-interest and try to shift people away from self-interest. So in our um, experiments, the use of different wording had an effect on behavior. Just changing one word in the appeal made people mm, increase, like increase payments. So shifting from donate, uh, to from pay to donate increase payment and from want to can increase payment, which seems to suggest that the mindset in, the, in which people are at the time of the transaction really might matter. Okay? That's it. That's all I have. Thank you very much. They were the same. What do you think about that? I mean, how do so, I mean, my, uh, so we had two competing hypotheses. So one was like, oh, is it really about being afraid of being cheap and so it's just to pay what you <coughs> can? Or even in private, even in public, right? There could be this effect that people just might want to pay more. We don't see it at all, but I mean, it could be that it's because of signaling. So people might just feel good. So there was some research before using pay what you want uh, pricing showing that over there, actually, people paid more <coughs> in private. And the idea is that you really feel, want to feel good about your own behavior. And you might just, over there, it's, you're really doing because you're a good person, not because the seller is controlling you or like yeah. judging you. Or judging. judging you, yes, yes. And maybe here, the, the two forces were kind of like going, pushing in opposite, opposite directions. How did the um, prices that people chose to pay uh, compare to the normal retail prices that they might be used to paying for the coffee? Yeah, so the coffee, so uh, with the pay what you can, we, the people paid slightly more than the regular coffee. I think the regular coffee was sold for the small size, for example, for $1.40, and, and people pay one fifty to buy something like that, a little more. With the pay what you want, they paid less, they pay around the dollar. And with the donut, the donut in the in the medicine experiment cost one dollar usually, and people paid much. Yeah. I was really interesting. I think the consumer might be pricing. I haven't thought about it, but it seems very relevant to getting donors to pay for the outcome, the actual outcome. Mm -hmm. So, like for a life you can save, or for you know reducing an incidence of malaria, for example. Yeah. Because when a donor is, and lots of donors talk about paying for outcomes or sort of buying outcomes, and of course there's no proper market for that. Like no one says, well, if you're going to give me ten pounds, I won't do it. That's just sure. And so I wonder whether there has ever been an experiment looking at what donors are willing to pay for a particular outcome. You know the way that mm -hmm. Oxfam, for example, will sell you quote unquote a, a goat for twenty dollars or whatever. Sure. So to look at actually what is the price that donors would pay for, for a just an outcome? Yeah, I'm not, so I don't think, I, I'm not familiar with the research that has looked into that, but I think it could be very 
interesting to do, like just to see whether people are, when asked to pay what they want for an outcome. Could be really good. Could be really interesting.